This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so grateful that you've chosen to tune in and worship with us virtually this morning. Although we long to be together again in this space, until that time comes, we continue to gather via the internet to share our praise for our Creator. Whether you're a longtime member or a visitor, I want you to know how grateful we are that you continue to worship the living God alongside us. If you are visiting with us, there is a link on our worship page for you to connect with us. Please fill out that form and we will share a more personal welcome with you. It is the Sunday we celebrate Pentecost, the birthday of the church. So let us use this time to think about the way the Holy Spirit has touched each of our hearts. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the living God. Come Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the breath of life. Come Holy Spirit, our advocate, our counselor. Come Holy Spirit, teacher of wisdom, reminder of Christ. Come Holy Spirit, grantor of forgiveness, giver of peace. Come Holy Spirit, may we feel God breathing through our worship.
enough to listen to the still speaking God and like the people of Jerusalem long ago we often misunderstand the Spirit's movement among us. In the silence and stillness of this movement let us draw near to God and listen. We confess to you renewing spirit that we confuse unity with uniformity and diversity with divisiveness. We speak and behave as if being a part of your family means assimilating others to our way of living. We deny and destroy the beauty you created in each other. We long to change these patterns, O Creator, but we do not know how. Teach us to value challenge, help us to see strength in difference, and empower us to build your kingdom in creativity and love. Amen. Hear the good news. God's Spirit has been poured upon all flesh, and we have been made one. We are no longer scattered or divided, but gathered together to build up the kingdom on this earth. Thanks be to God. friends peace be with you all do you know what day it is in church today I've got some um, hints all around me like this birthday banner but it's not my birthday and I'm also wearing this lovely crown with a flame on top of it and I'm wearing the color red if we were together in church today you would probably see a lot of people wearing the color red today and our pyramids or the things hanging in church um, would also be red and that is because today is Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost was a festival that was back in Jesus's time, back even after Jesus had died. And it was a Jewish festival that people celebrated. And I'm gonna read you this story to help us understand what Pentecost is a little bit more. And then we'll talk about all these hints too. Jesus' disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost when suddenly a strong wind blew through the house. Everyone's hair lifted up and there was an amazing noise. They looked at each other. It looked like each disciple had a flame of fire touching him, but no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come, just as Jesus promised. The disciples began to speak in different languages languages they never learned. Stranger yet, they could understand each other. Peter stood up. 
I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus taught them. He told them how Jesus died and lives again. It's time for us to begin a new life with God's spirit guiding us, Peter said. The disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's spirit. This was the very beginning of the Christian church. So Pentecost that day, Peter was teaching about Jesus and teaching about God. The Holy Spirit was upon all of them. It came through the wind and it came through the flame and it came through uh, each other's voices. And the Holy Spirit is God and all around us. And so that was the first church. And so we celebrate a birthday on Pentecost Sunday and the birthday is for church not Faith Presbyterian Church, or not just Faith Presbyterian Church, but all churches. So I would like for you with your family after church worship is over today to discuss maybe how to say thank you or hello in some different languages, and also maybe try to figure out what gifts um, the Holy Spirit gives you, so ways that you, you are talented and gifted. Please pray with me. Good morning, God. Thank you for waking us up. Help us to feel and see your Holy Spirit all around us. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. But before I read that, please pray with me. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Listen now for a word from the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. The divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood 
and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is a celebration. It's Pentecost, the reason I'm wearing red and the birthday of the church, thanks to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If you look at my stole, you'll see references to flames of fire and to a dove, reminders of the Spirit's outpouring. But even before it was the church's birthday, it was a celebration. That's why in our scripture lesson this morning, it says they were gathered. You see, Pentecost actually means 50. And in Jewish tradition, 50 days after Passover was the festival of weeks, Shavuot. During this celebration, the Jewish people celebrate the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. This is why they are all gathered. It's a celebration. And as the party is getting started, the most incredible thing happens. A holy moment. From heaven, there is a rush of wind. This is the clue that God is on the move. We saw it in the creation story, when the Spirit hovered over the waters. God is on the move. Wind rushes. What's more, in Exodus 19, before Moses goes up the mountain to receive the law, there is smoke and fire and the earth shakes. Another big holy moment. I imagine for those gathered in the scripture we just read, their minds might hearken back to this story that they've been told, especially since they are gathered to celebrate that moment which the law was given. And who can forget that iconic encounter that Elijah had with God where he came out of the cave and God passed before him, not in the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but in the gentle whisper that followed. Those big moments were clues for Elijah and for us that God is on the move. So on Pentecost, as they're gathering to celebrate the festival and waiting for the spirit that Jesus promised, that big moment happens. After the rush of wind, the text tells us that divided tongues like fire fell on them. Now, I don't think that this is meant to be understood as physical fire. You see, it was common in contemporary Jewish writings and in Greco-Roman literature for fire to be a metaphor for a physiological experience of prophetic inspiration. In other words, as Luke is recounting this holy moment for us, he wants us to understand that the Spirit's fiery presence signifies the power to think about God in fresh and inspired ways. God is on the move, opening minds and inspiring new ideas. This is starting out to be a pretty good Pentecost celebration. And when the Spirit arrives, when it's poured out on all those who are gathered, it brings with it the gift of communication. All could hear. People from every nation were able to understand. Did you catch that? It's not simply that they heard them speaking, but with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they understood. I've shared with you before about the mission trip I took the summer after my junior year of high school to Bolivia, South America. I'm often drawn back to that trip in my mind because it was filled with so many of those holy moments, those times when I was clearly able to experience God on the move. 
Most of our trip was spent working in an orphanage, which blessed me with the opportunity to get to play with the most loving children. However, they spoke no English, and I spoke very little Spanish. That was all right, because as you may remember from your childhood, to play a game of tag or laugh at silly faces, you don't need many words. But the more we played together, the more the children longed for us to be able to communicate with one another. And so we'd work with the little Spanish I knew, and we'd count to ten together, both of us in Spanish, and then I in English, they in Spanish, repeating one after the other. It was our small way of communicating with language. On Sunday morning of the trip, we gathered in the chapel at the orphanage and were waiting for the pastor from town to arrive. I could tell the children wanted to play. They were getting a little antsy in the waiting. It felt somehow disrespectful, though, for me to start a game of tag in the sanctuary. So I did the only thing I could think of in that space to entertain children. I started to sing my old faithful children's church song, Jesus Loves Me. To my delight, as I got a few stanzas into the first verse, the children's eyes lit up and they began to grin. And when I got to the chorus, they joined in. What was so special is that I was singing in English and they in Spanish. While I was singing in my language, they understood. What a holy moment to feel so divided and yet to be understood. It's what our world needs now more than ever. To not simply hear one another talk, but to understand. Because just like our scripture, our world is filled with those who doubt. We can all fall into this trap of making excuses instead of actually listening to one another. I'm sure you've heard something like this before. <sighs> She's just pushing her agenda. All he does is parrot what he hears from those talking heads on the news. I don't want to hear politics, just preach the gospel. They're filled with new wine. Peter is clear in the response he preaches. This is about what God is doing here and now through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is an equalizer allowing men and women, young and old, free and slave of all races to experience the great work of God. When I look at the world today, I find myself hungry for that Pentecost moment again. For starters, I want to be gathered all together in the same place like the scripture says. Can I get an amen? I know you said amen in your living room. But even more, even more than I long for us to be gathered together in the same physical space. I long for the narrative to change in our news cycle. I long for the culture to change in our society. My heart is broken by the list that continues to lengthen with names like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. I'm exhausted by living in a world where someone has looked at because of the color of their skin and presumed guilty instead of being seen as a child of God. And most of all, I'm humiliated that it's taken me this long to speak out because I am a person of privilege. I have enjoyed the safety of my skin color and the comfort of my call 
so much so that I exchanged it for what I knew to be the Spirit trying to do in and through me and through this congregation. You see, if the Spirit has descended on me and I am clear that this is her message, that all of us are to be in this together, and that until it is safe to live as a black person in America, it is not safe for any of us, and you have not heard that message from the Holy Spirit, then it's on me to translate it. Because the Spirit has descended and has convicted me, and it's time for me to speak until the world hears but not just hears. I'm supposed to speak until they can understand that God is on the move and hatred cannot be where God is present. That God is on the move and love is what the Spirit of God brings. That the Spirit came to unify, not divide. That the Spirit came to make us one, not draw us against each other. And if I speak with the Spirit's words, I have to believe that others will begin to understand, that others will see the power of God's deeds and will testify to the same. I believe that the wind of God is blowing through our community, and it is calling us to proclaim the gospel message that God's grace is for all. So where do I start? There are a few ways I am feeling led to begin this process, and I'd like to invite you to join me. The first is through evaluating my own heart. I hesitated to bring this story up because of how uncomfortable it makes me, but I think it's necessary to name if I want to allow the Spirit to work in and through me. A few weeks ago, it was easy for me to feel heartbroken and yet distance myself from people who may look like me, but yet were upholding a racist system. God is not present in hatred. I don't have that kind of hatred in my heart. After all, I would never grab a gun and chase someone down in my neighborhood. I guess I can wash my hands of that guilt. But then, I saw the story this week of the white woman in Central Park, and it put a lump in my throat. Because while she did not pull a gun, she gave in to the racism of our society and in her own heart, using the police as a threat instead of looking at her own behavior. You see... There have been times in my life when I've tensed up being approached by a man of color and he was doing nothing wrong. There's just this little piece of racism seated in my heart that I so often want to avoid. I wonder if the same is true for you. If you're not quite as far from this broken system as you'd like to believe. May we take time to look inward and to work to weed out those bits deep down that would prevent the Spirit's work from taking root in our lives. Second, I think we have a responsibility to listen to those voices. Voices that don't sound like our own. We have to be intentional to hear from those whose life experience is damaged by systemic racism and lift them up so others can begin to understand their experience. For me, it's been really helpful to look within our own tribe of the PCUSA to the leader of our church, stated clerk J. Herbert Nelson, and to my friend Aisha Brooks Lytle, who serves as the executive presbyter in Greater Atlanta. I encourage you to curate your social media. 
to seek out people of color, authors, pastors, people who are speaking the truth of their lives. Find those people of color who are sharing their stories and listen and amplify their voices. We do this because the Bible calls us to do justice. And to do justice, we must courageously make other people's problems our problems. Only then are we truly able to love our neighbor as ourself. Only then are we able to live as one who has the breath of life who is filled with the Holy Spirit. It's time for a Pentecost rebirth, and my prayer is that it will begin in our hearts this day. We need to celebrate the Holy Spirit at work in our midst, not making us uniform, but making us unified. May we each be given eyes to see how God is at work over there, and right here. May the Spirit show us that those with different skin color than ours are created in God's image, and I can worship God because of that. May we celebrate Pentecost this day, knowing that those who speak differently than we do are not to be shamed or feared, but are filled with the Spirit, and I can praise our Creator for it. May we welcome the Holy Spirit in each of us so that we can speak out all that we know to be true so others begin to feel it's moving too, so they too can be enlightened and we can all experience a rebirth of God's presence in our community. That's exactly what Charles Wesley was writing about when he penned the verses we know as O for a thousand tongues to sing. Charles, the brother of John, was a priest in the Church of England. He knew Christ, but had an incredibly transformational encounter with the Spirit thanks to living alongside those who were different than him, his Moravian siblings. On Pentecost Sunday, 1738, he experienced a spiritual rebirth which he described as his heart being strangely warmed. He felt that he could not sing enough of God's grace. If he had 1,000 tongues, he would use every one of them to praise God. That was the gift of Pentecost. It was not one tongue, but many tongues praising God. A diversity of voices unified to lift up God's holy name. It's Pentecost. Let's celebrate that the Holy Spirit is in our midst. And in the same breath, may we not forget to go and speak out on behalf of every nation, so that all can hear and experience the Spirit's movement. Through the power of the Pentecost Spirit, may we work for a world where all God's children can truly experience that freedom and sing the triumph of God's grace. As we prepare to bring our tithes and offerings to God, I want to remind you of a special way that you have to give this Pentecost Sunday. In the Presbyterian Church USA, we collect a special offering every Pentecost Sunday that goes to help further the ministry of the church as it relates to youth, children, and young adults. And so I encourage you to go to the website pcusa.org backslash give and go to the top banner that's in red and give to the Pentecost offering. This will go to further important work to help the current and future church as it relates to children and young adults. As always, we are grateful for the ways that you continue to give as we are physically distanced. You can mail us your tithe 
you can go online to faithpcusa.org backslash give, or you can use the Give Plus app. Thank you for continuing to support the work and ministry of the church so that we in turn can support the vital work of our partner agencies. Let us give our tithes and offerings to the God who has given us all. As the wind sung through the trees, as the stirring of the breeze, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the heart made strangely warm, as the voice within the storm, Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For all you have given, for all we have received, we give you thanks. We bring before you our gifts of substance and the gifts of our lives. We bring our passion and joy and surprise, our visions and dreams. May they refresh and enliven our church and community as the wind of your spirit did long ago. Amen. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we boldly but humbly come into your presence today to proclaim our love for you and to seek your involvement in our lives. These are strange and bewildering days for so many people. We're not accustomed to dealing with so silent and stealthy an enemy. 
Thus our sense of confidence and defiance is really on shaky ground. We now have a sense of what the disciples felt immediately following Christ's death. How wonderful it is for us to be able to read the rest of the story of our Savior Jesus Christ. Today we need to be reminded that just as Pentecost came for the disciples, we can experience Pentecost today, where there is worry and uncertainty. Your spirit can bring peace and assurance. Where there is grief and sorrow, your spirit can bring us understanding and joy as we hear again the powerful words of Jesus, I will not leave you. Where there is anger and frustration, your spirit can bring us calm and focus. Also, Lord, when we feel alone and isolated from family, friends, and church members, your Spirit can remind us that in reality, we are never alone. You are always with us, nearer than the blood that flows through our veins. Father, I'm reminded of the words of the third verse of our Focus Hymn today. Jesus, the name that calms my fears, that bids my sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. And because of your works of grace in our lives, we believe it. If only we had a thousand tongues to sing how gracious you are to us each and every moment of each and every day. So now, gracious God, we lift together our voices and pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. triumphs of God's grace. The name of Jesus charms our fears and bids our sorrows cease. Seeks music in the sinner's ears, brings life and health and peace. Christ speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful waken the poor in heart believe. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. To God all glory, praise, and love be now and Friends, God is on the move. May we experience the outpouring of the Spirit. May we experience a rebirth in our own hearts. And then may we go out and speak of God's wonderful deeds, making it so all voices can be heard, all voices can experience the incredible grace of our loving God. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>